Jackler's Law Group clients are happy clients, and here's why. Our lawyers are experienced, hardworking professionals who fight until you win, and you pay no fees until we do. If you've been injured in a car, truck, or train crash, we meet you where you are and when you can. If you've been in a crash, don't wait. Call the big dogs now. Let us handle the insurance company so you can focus on healing, and you'll see why we were named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country. Along those lines, Matt, with the, with the job that Jalen's done over the course of the season, how much different is he, from your perspective, over what he was a season ago? And what more of an interior is my Well, I think a lot of times, you know, you think more is better. You know, you'd rather have him and Bruno for him, you know, anybody would like that. But sometimes offensively, those guys being on the court together can really help Maryland, but also can hurt them. And so we, we deal with it a lot, and we've dealt with a lot with quality players. So both of them are really good players, but he has more space to play. You know, he's not going to pick a pop as a four as much. You know, and so he gets into some situations where he can get some open freezes at five. You know, and now he's diving and he can get some of those lobs. So when you're that athletic and talented and skilled, you know, you'll you want to get him as many cracks out of it as possible or give him that kind of attention so that he can pass and create some openings for other people. So his presence alone, you know, gets those guys some shots. So but they can't forget about him. You know, the guards will forget about big guys that are good. Because most of the guards that you know that play, they, they've grown up playing with big guys that stink. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is. Really big. You know what I mean? So he's a really good player. And so sometimes, as a guard, they just dribble too much. And you can't forget about him. Man. He's got you got to keep him happy. You got to get him the basketball. And he doesn't have to get you know 20 shots a game, but he needs to get you know 10 to 15 shots a game. Make them double. Now get people in rotations. And you know Maryland's a much better three-point shooting team than they've shown this year. You saw it today in the first half. Uh, they forced us to go smaller and switch four ways. Uh, but like if they can, if they can shoot the ball well to go with how good they are defensively. They got a great point guard and they got a great big guy. You know, they can go a long way. And coach, you're playing off of Jalen Smith and Dante Scott, the four. Would you see him today and how well complements what Jalen does? Yeah, well, he's, he kind of became the X factor there in the first half. And him making threes. When you look at their lineup. You look at the top six players with Williams coming off the bench. You know, he's the guy that's. You know, as a, as a freshman, hasn't been through it yet. You know, um, you know, Ayala is a guy that hasn't shot well this year, but you know he's capable. He I mean, shot 40 percent last year. You know he can knock down shots. So he really helped them. You know, we were trying to give a little bit more help, and we talked about his ability to shoot the ball, but you know, he, he not really 
got to go and you have to go. He definitely helps you. Anytime you have a good big guy, you got to stretch forward and make some threes. That opens up some space that really helps. Coach, how big was uh, Joe Joe Easter in, in keeping your team in the game? Yeah, he was huge. Uh, he, he really competed the whole night. And uh, I know we're, we're down whatever we're down at halftime, but I thought he competed in the first half. One of the few guys that was you know, ready to go. Kind of had a mass sub there. We've had a couple games with the start to where we started today. And so just trying to get some energy out there. But um, I thought he was great in the second half. Better did a really good job, made good decisions, drove the ball. But just played hard. And uh, that's what we need from him. We need him to lead us and play hard. You know, but sometimes he can get some matchups that can really help him. So we put him as our four from the defensive standpoint so we can switch a lot of those things. And uh, it really helped us in the second half. But then he also made good decisions to drove the ball, which was great to see. Uh, what do you see from Aaron Wiggins? He had struggled a bit coming into the game, but then uh, he had a couple shots and a couple big picks. Yeah, well, he went three for six in his last game, uh, coming off the bench in Wisconsin. So anytime a guy has struggled shooting and they do well, a lot of times people don't understand, like, just keep on the you know, So now that's a really form coming off the bench and he shoots better. That's good. But he's a good player, obviously. You saw his um, athleticism with that dunk. And, uh, but he's, he's a good player. I mean, he can make shots, he can drive the basketball. Sometimes gets a little in between, but that's kind of the you know the evolution of a young player that's talented. You've got to get to that mid-range jumper, finish at the rim, go along with his threes. But uh, you're on a good team. You know, when you're on a good team, sometimes it's you're not always going to get um, as many attempts and stuff. But uh, you know we, we just try to stay with him as much as possible and we try to make it hard. Matt, when you have the cut the lead all, all the way down three, you have a couple opportunities. Closer. Yeah. How, how big was their defense on some of the things that you were trying to do, and also, right. and also on that possession where it seemed like you guys were to stop them again, and Wiggins found Smith. Right. Right. That, that was big. We fell down. So our guy that was guarding Wiggins fell down. Then they took him, and then no one recognized him. It's really hard from a rotation standpoint. Mm -hmm. Balls in the middle of the floor and kind of a scrum like that. So uh, that was kind of just a good awareness on Wiggins when our guy falls down and we don't get back up to. You know, stop that. And I really think at the end, like you know, Jalen Smith was the key for them. You know, we, we got a couple of ISOs. The best we could get was you know, trade me out with the ball and map with the ball and kind of one-on-one -on -one plays, and he got the better of them. And probably I think there's only three possessions total there. Um, and, and going down the stretch, I like to get the one call back on the fan of the travel call um, when we come around because he ends up getting fouled. I don't know if they end up calling, but um, he just dribbled the ball and he looked through his back. I don't know how he didn't see it. Uh, and I'd like to have that one back against some points. Because any if we could have made it a one possession game, you know, tight there at the end, you know, anything can happen. Coach, uh, it's been rough on the road for you, but what you saw in the second half gave you encouragement that maybe things might change uh, for you. Yeah, well you hope so. Obviously there's another team out there. You know, sometimes people look at it as your woes, but you're, you know, we yet to get beat on the road, you know, we don't walk away and say the other team pretty good team and they play better than us and maybe there's one game in there where the team maybe is not as good and they just they, but they simply play better than us. Here, you know, Maryland's good. Like everybody's kind of having the same issue. Um, but whoever's going to win this league is going to have to win some road. You know, if you look at you know, Michigan State's a team that hasn't been on the road much yet for that five out of seven at home, so you don't know with them. Everybody else has, you know, struggled. And then the, the one team that's won the most is Wisconsin and they lost at home to Illinois. So you know, if, if somebody wants to win this league, you know, you, you, you think that they're going to have to string together some road wins. But uh, we played well in the second half against Michigan on the road. We had a shot at the buzzer during the game. Uh, we, we won a non-conference game on the road, and then today we played well in the second half. But we, you know, we haven't played well in Nebraska. We haven't played well in Illinois. You know, we have to do a better job of being ready to play. Um, as a coach, when you coach a long time, uh, people always look at you and ask you, well, what the hell is the problem? Like we're not getting prepared the same way when we play well to when we play poorly. It's one of the dumbest questions. Ever. <laughs> hey, let's just not prepare for this one. <laughs> let's just let this go. I think we'll get married. You know? um, and so when they when they say that, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. But you know, you're trying. Uh, my answer is there's another team out there. Like Maryland just lost two guys. You think they're not from a human behavior standpoint? You think they're not going to be ready to play? You think they're not going to be comfortable? You know. In their own arena, so um, you, you just got to find a way. It'd be great if you could get this one or get Michigan, but that's the way it is. And you got to keep battling, and you know, just win your next game and keep your focus right there. But it's difficult. 
Coach, uh, Maryland's offense was pretty fluid uh, in the first half, but the second half it seemed that you guys slowed it down a bit. Uh, what adjustments did you all make at halftime? We just played smaller. I tried to sub in and play those two big guys together. Not a little bit, but we played bigger than four. But then we just switched our ball screens four ways and just tried it. But, um, you know, they're so good at, at breaking you down off the dribble. The better you can do at containing them, uh, the fewer times you're going to stay out of the rotation. So we just, just tried our best to try to, to get help from our big guy. The one thing about getting help from your big guy when he gets deep, you know, they're so good at those lobs. And so now you come in and they can find somebody on the other side of the court. So just trying to get our hands up. Uh, you know, we were trying in the first half, too. Um, and things do look better when the ball goes in. So like you can give them probably more credit than they deserve in the first half. And you can give us more credit than we deserve in the second half. When in reality, there's a lot of variables that go into it. So they had a couple that they should have made in that second half. They just didn't go down. But that's part of basketball. You get on good streaks and you get on tough streaks. So we just tried our best to, to stay into it. And, Keep them out in the middle and you know try to contain the drill with the best part. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.